Given that stocks paid off 10 times as much as cash over the past 3 decades, you might think that people invest their long-term savings in stocks as much as possible. But they don't. Why? They pay way too much attention to short-term stock price fluctuations. Investors hold on to excessive amounts of cash for long periods of time. Surveys suggest that investors rarely, if ever, hold less than 20% in cash and cash equivalents. And we're not just talking about the average investor. Even legendary investor Warren Buffett has held at least 25 billion in cash throughout the past 20 years, and says that his successor might want to hold less cash. Don't take it from me, take it from the man himself. Warren, you are a big advocate of index investing of, and of not trying to time the market. But by your having Berkshire hold such a large amount of cash and T-bills, it seems to me you don't practice what you preach. I'm thinking that a good alternative would be for you to invest most of Berkshire's excess cash in a well-diversified index fund until you find an attractive acquisition or buyback stock. Had you done that over the past 15 years, all the time keeping the $20 billion cash cushion you want, I estimate that at the end of 2018, the company's $112 billion balance in cash, cash equivalents, and short-term investments in T-bills would have instead been worth about $155 billion. The difference between the two figures is an opportunity cost equal to more than 12% of Berkshire's current book value. What is your response to what I say? And for I forgot to say that the question is from Mike Elzhar, who is with the Colony Group located in Boca Raton, Florida. That's a perfectly response? decent question, and I, I wouldn't quarrel with the numbers. And I would say that that, that, that is an alternative, for example, that my successor uh, may wish to employ, because on balance, I would rather own uh, an index fund than, than, than carry treasury bills. Numerous studies have shown that the fear of a short-term loss can explain why people hold so much cash. In 2016, 300 professional traders were offered the opportunity to trade an asset that mimicked the stock market. Half of them had access to second-by-second -second prices, while the other half had access to prices every 4 hours. Guess which group performed better? The group that had less information was more profitable. They made 53% more profit than the other group because they invested 33% more in the risky asset. So it appears that removing access to information reduced traders' fears of short-term losses, allowing them to make more profitable long-term decisions. That's not surprising, as the pain of a loss is more than twice as powerful as the joy of a gain, a phenomenon known as loss aversion. And if the fear of a short-term loss can prevent professional traders from making profits, how much more can it affect us? The study's results have been replicated in different contexts, suggesting that many of us can benefit from paying less attention to short-term stock market fluctuations. The point of this video is not to encourage reckless gambling in individual stocks. Going after the hottest new names in the market can be extremely risky especially if you're a novice investor. Individual stocks can lose all their value, and finding out that your investment account is worthless would be a rude shock. Instead, buy a low-cost index fund that gives you the average performance of the market, and check the price as infrequently as you can. Notice how stunningly the market performs, and it's never lost its value completely, not even during the Great Depression. So that's a stress-free method of making money that is incredibly low risk over the long run. The point of this video is to help us be aware of and control our desires. It's good to have more information, so why not check stock prices several times a day? However, this thinking ignores the fact that checking stock prices takes time. More importantly, frequent checking may also trigger fears of making a loss, causing us to hoard cash. Indeed, how can you hold a stock for 20 years if you don't first hold it for one week? A good start would be to turn off investment app notifications 
and to unsubscribe from daily emails telling you how your portfolio performed. If that isn't good enough, consider deleting the apps entirely. Also, challenge yourself to check your accounts only once a month or even once a year and join an online accountability group to keep yourself on track. As Benjamin Graham says, the investor's chief problem and his worst enemy is likely to be himself. In the end, how your investments behave is much less important than how you behave. Likewise, our desires to continually use social media, binge watch the latest TV series, and turn inward when stress all seem very natural at first glance. But each of them can exacerbate existing problems, making our emotions worse than before. But by finding ways to restrict technology use and connect with friends, we take the first step to becoming the best version of ourselves. Remember that in many settings from investing to technology, the less you look at something, the better you feel. <laughs>